Well, it's another new month, and that of course means a new release of Home Assistant. It still amazes me how much they get through each month. Well, thank you. So in this video, we're going to go through the changes of 2023.4 of Home Assistant. So let's get stuck in. As always, there's a combination of big and small changes in this release. So the ones that I've picked out are the alarm control panel, the blind slash covers entity, macros for templates, database improvements, language translations, and a few others. So let's take a look at the alarm control panel first and compare it to the previous release. Okay, so we've got the previous version of Home Assistant on the left and the new version of Home Assistant on the right. If you look at the house alarm panel, you can see they look the same, and that's because the entity card itself hasn't really changed. So let's dig into the entity. You can see this is the old entity, which looks very similar to the card. And this one instead has got each state of the alarm. So you press that first, and then it brings up the keypad. So let's press home, nice keypad. And then it says arming. Let's do the one on the left. It says arming there. And then it highlights it green for the state that it's now in. Now let's disarm. Similar process. And it's disarmed. So there we go. As well as the entity changing, there's also the tile card which you can include the alarm on and that also looks different. So let's take a look at that. So as you can see here, the house alarm shows the different states of the alarm in a nice little row here. So you can press this and then it brings up the keypad. And then to disarm, just do the same. There we go. So there are the changes to the house alarm. Another change that's been made is to the covers entities and also to the fan entities. So now let's take a look at those. So on the left hand side, if we look at the covers here, we've got a blind and we've got two garage doors. So let's press the blind and you can see it's got position and tilt position with sliders. With the garage door, you can see it's got up and down. And then this version of garage door, you can see it's got up, down and stop. If I go to the right hand side, however, in the new version, you can see it's got these nice sliders here for open and close and also for the tilt. If we look at the garage door one, it's got open and close. Quite neat. If we look at the other garage door one with the stop on it, you can see that it's got an up down stop like this instead. Now, if we take a look at the fan entities, I'll let me click on this one, and you can see it's got the speed and the presets, three presets. And then my other fan has got a speed and presets as well, four presets here. But if you look at them in the new version, let's click this one first, you can see that it's got the three speeds, which is quite nice. On mine, the percentage doesn't update because this is just a dummy fan. And if you look at this one, you can see that this one's a slider. That's because there's more than three speeds defined. So it does it as a slider instead of having a button for each speed. And then if we look back at the tile card, we can see I've created a tile card for the fans here. And you can see that it's got the same thing. So you've got off and then the three speeds. And then for the one that's got more than three speeds, you can adjust the slider like so. In this release, they've made a lot of database improvements, particularly around performance, which I think is always welcome. So it mentions that it's been generally improved to be faster, which is great. Disk I.O. is better, so that's good for people that use an SD card, although I'm not sure how many people do anymore, and also quicker startup times which I think is great. If you've got a lot of entities, startup times can be a little slow sometimes. I've got over a thousand entities and I know that it always used to be slow, although I've definitely seen this improve in the last couple of years. And also another small change is, is when you rename an entity, it keeps the history. I didn't realize it didn't do this already, to be honest, but a very welcome change. Another thing they've been involved in in this release is translations. And I think it's great that they've been doing translations because it really opens up the product to more people and it'll hopefully make it more accessible and more competitive with other products like Google and with Amazon. 
One small change, which I think is a welcome addition, is breaking out the Sun entity into multiple entities. So if you look over here, you can see that there's not anything on the front page. But if I look at the new version, I have lots of Sun entities here. So I've got next dawn, dusk, midnight, noon, rising and setting. You can see them all here with the date and time for the state. I think this will be really handy for people's automations. So an interesting feature that's been added is macros for templates. So let's take a look at that. So looking at the documentation, what you need to do is you need to create a new file, which is in this new subfolder called custom templates, which is under your config directory. And then here's an example of creating a macro. And then here's an example of referring to that macro within some sort of template. So for example, an automation. So let's take a look at an example. So in Visual Studio Code, I've created this new folder, custom templates, and then I've created this file. I've called it the same name as what they've done in the documentation, but I think you can call it anything, to be honest, as long as you reference it with the same name. So here's an example macro that I've created. So it's just checking basically to see is someone in the lounge or not, and is it daytime or not? So not a particularly useful automation, but it's just to try it out. Now that we've got this macro created, I've noticed that what you need to do is, is you actually do need to reload the configuration. So if you go to developer tools and YAML, and then you can do all YAML configuration, that will load in that file. So once you've done that, we can then use it in an automation or something like that. So I've created a sample automation. So let's take a look at that. A place you could use it is under a condition, for example. So here I've imported the file and I've said import this particular macro, and then I'm calling this macro with the parameter night, and then it will return true or false if it's night time and if someone's in the lounge. So then I can do a test here to see if it's true or not, and in this case, it doesn't pass. So you can see that it's all working correctly. If I now try and reference a different macro that doesn't exist, you'll see that it comes up with an error. So let's add that macro into the file. I'm just going to copy and paste this macro and then I'm going to rename it to this. I'm going to go back to here and now try it again and you can see it's still failing. So if we now go to developer tools, uh, check configuration and then all the animal configuration, let's reload that. And then let's go back to the automation Let's make sure it's calling the new macro. You can now see that the new macro is working correctly. I think this functionality is really quite powerful actually. I probably won't use it much myself because I use a combination of Home Assistant for basic automations and Node-RED for more complex ones, but I think a lot of people will find it quite useful. So on to some breaking changes for this release. So MQTT, the TLS version parameter, needs to now be removed, otherwise it won't start up. We've got IMAP change, so that that's an integration instead of being in the YAML config. We've got OpenAI, where they've changed it to a different version um, to cater for things like rate limiting. We've got push bullet, which is also a change from YAML to an integration. I believe it automatically copies the config across, which is handy. Tasmota also has a small change. It used to force a state change every time, and that made it very difficult to use things like the last changed value. So now it doesn't do that. And finally, Z-Wave. I don't use Z-Wave myself, but apparently you need to do some updates there to keep it working. So there's a walkthrough of most of the latest features of the Home Assistant release. Please comment down below with your favorite features and changes. And whilst you're there, please consider liking the video and subscribing. Well, that's it for this video, so thanks until next time.